Um, when I was, uh, hi. Uh, so, um, I'm gonna, wow, there we go, there we go. Now I feel like I'm with you. Um, so when I was five years old, growing up with my single mom in Victoria, Texas, uh, one night she got me pretty much the worst babysitter in the whole world. Um, this woman's boyfriend, woman, this girl's boyfriend came over in a Megadeth t-shirt with a mullet, and she wanted to make out with him on the porch, so she sat me in front of the TV and found something black and white. I remember her saying that as if maybe that would be safe. She left, and for two hours I proceeded to watch the children's, it's really a golden classic, David Lynch's The Elephant Man. <laughs> um, it was the most terrifying thing I'd ever experienced, and I couldn't look away. Uh, I watched the whole movie, and that night I went to sleep, uh, tried to go to sleep, and I finally just barged into my mother's room, and I was like, Mom, I, I can't go to sleep. And she said, well, honey, what's wrong? And I told her, I said, I, I watched this horrible movie about a monster called the Elephant Man. My mom let me stay with her that night, and the next morning we woke up, and she went through the TV guide, and she said, okay, it's gonna be on Thursday night, we're gonna watch it together. <laughs> And I thought, like, is the punishment for watching the Elephant Man watching the Elephant Man? So that night, my mom sat with me. She made some Campbell's tomato soup and my favorite uh, hors d'oeuvre, which was Ritz crackers and sharp sliced cheddar cheese, fanned out on a plate the way I liked it. And uh, we sat in front of the TV, and she proceeded to be my guide through the wonderful world of the Elephant Man. Um, and she was great, like I would get really scared and at a certain point my mom would say, no, Anne Bancroft isn't crying because she's scared like the nurse, she's touched by John Merrick's poetry. <laughs> and then at another part, <laughs> and then at another part she would say, um, I know you're scared of him, the man that looks normal isn't scary, but look, he has the whip. And I was like, oh, okay, I started to put it together. And then at one point I always remember she, she, she looked at it and she said, um, they call him the Elephant Man, but his name is really John Merrick. And he likes opera and building models. And, <laughs> and by the time the crazy, there's a crazy scene where these like angry, the angry carnival people that want him back and these prostitutes that just like go around town with him, they break in and they pour whiskey down the Elephant Man's throat and they show him his reflection and he screeches like a girl at it. Ah! By that point, I was standing on the couch in my footy pajamas being like, leave the Elephant Man alone. He didn't do anything to hurt you. He was like Superman to me, this like deformed creature. And that was probably like the gateway to my love of dark things. Uh, now, there was already other genetic stuff happening. Uh, my mother was this uh, very sweet little redheaded woman. She was Canadian, she's from Newfoundland, and she was, had a bunch of knickknacks all over the house, and you would look on her bookshelves, and there would be like Royal Dulton tea kettles and Precious Moments dolls, you know, those big eyes. And then you'd look through it, and all of a sudden you would be like, oh, there's like a John Wayne Gacy memoir, and then you'd be like, oh, the biography of Jeffrey Dahmer, and then you would be like, oh, there's like a 12 book collection of the Green Lake murders. And at a certain point, all you couldn't see anything past like the trail of prostitute body parts and child murders. And it was just so weird that this was a trait of my mother's. And by the time I was maybe like, I guess 12 years old, we had probably seen every horror movie that existed. I myself, she got me for Christmas a, um, a subscription to Fangoria magazine, which I love very much. And we would sit and we would watch all these movies. And my mother sort of did consider herself sort of like an amateur forensics person. And we would watch these movies and she would sort of be my guide through them in her own way as well. We'd be watching them and she'd say, see honey, he wears a hockey mask and it's not to hide his identity, it's because he's vulnerable. If you saw your mother beheaded by an angry teenager, you'd be upset too. Uh, we'd be watching Halloween and she would say, Michael Myers just has a horrible case of sibling rivalry. What he really has is a Peter Pan complex. I dated men like that. <laughs> well, I always remember when we watched uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, she said, those parents acted with vigilante mentality when they burnt that man alive. Now he's gonna come back and kill their children in their dreams for years and years. Who's really the monster? <laughs> And in that way, I, I love that because like my mom and I would watch these movies together and like the lead character was never like the girl like with the lamp and the axe, like Ugh! it was like always the killer. Like that's what the movie was really all about. And at a certain point, especially by the time I reached maybe like 13, I really started to, in a way that I probably didn't realize in my top brain, identify with that guy. Um, I had always felt a little out of place and a little different, but as I became a teenager, I realized that that difference was that I was gay. And it scared the living shit out of me because 
I thought, I'm gonna come out of the closet, I'm gonna lose all my friends and family, and then I'm gonna die of this horrible disease that I just can't stop hearing about called AIDS. And if you remember in the early 90s, you couldn't watch MTV for like five <laughs> minutes. Next on MTV, Madonna has a public service announcement about AIDS. Next on MTV, in the real world house, someone struggles with AIDS. Next, TLC is gonna wear like outfits made of condoms and rap about AIDS. Um, <laughs> It was just horrible, it was like, it, and that to me, that was scary, that was scary, fuck Michael Myers. I didn't wanna be like a gay dude. And it, it made me so scared that I sort of like uh, shut down. Like I, 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 wasn't, I wasn't bullied so much. All it took was one or two comments in sixth grade and that was it, I just like became a wallflower, you know? I almost had um, a uniform, I look at all these pictures of me in middle school and I'm always wearing like khaki pants and a different short sleeve button up collared shirt that's usually like denim, light blue or dark blue. I basically always look like a little chubby lesbian blockbuster video employee in all these pictures. <laughs> Because what I wanted was just not to be seen. Um, towards the end of eighth grade, I was starting to stress out because I knew that high school was coming and um, that thing happened, it's probably happened to all of you guys where like, you get invited to a really cool party, but only because like your mom works with a woman who knows someone that works in the office who is the aunt of the woman that is the mother of the star football player. So she gets you into this party or whatever, and you just feel like so humiliated, like you're excited. But I was terrified because this was Glenn Taylor's Halloween party. And Glenn Taylor was like better looking than me and had a billion friends and he had a pool in his backyard, which I knew was a big, big deal. And I got ready to go to this party that night at home and I had a little bit of time, uh, like a week to get my costume together. So I went and I found this awesome green and red striped sweater. I found the latex totally wrap around Freddy Krueger mask. It was like 60 bucks and my mom got it for me. So my mom was gonna come home from work to pick me up. She'd work like a double shift at the mall and I was getting ready and I, I got my costume together. And then I looked in the mirror and I just was Freddy Krueger. Like it, it bored me. Like I knew I had like 30 minutes and I was like, wow, this is it? This should be more fun. So, I went to my mom's bathroom and I found her makeup kit. I proceeded to put a full face of like Miss Piggy, like Christina Aguilera makeup on this Freddy Krueger mask. Bright red lips, green eyeshadow, and then I was like, oh my God, this is so funny, I'm gonna be a full on character. So I went through my mom's closet and I got this dress and I got this belt and I cinched it and then I like stuffed the bra and then I found this huge hat she had and I pulled a flower that she had in the dining room table and I stuck it in. And as I walked outside, my mom pulled up in her little Chevette to take me to the party, and I banged on the glass, and she went, oh! And then I said, it's me, Frederica Krueger! <laughs> <laughs> and my mother proceeded to laugh hysterically. The whole way that she's driving me to this party, I'm working on this, like, this comedy set on my mom, basically. I have this basket, and I pull this little handkerchief off, and it's full of these little Pepperidge Farm breadsticks that I squirted ketchup on, and I was like, lady fingers! <laughs> And, and my mom and I at one point are at a red light and she, she has her, her hands clamped to her thighs and she's just saying over and over, you're gonna make your mother pee, you're gonna make your mother pee because that was two things that my mother did when she was really like hysterically laughing. She talked about herself in third person and she threatened urination. Um, <laughs> And at a certain point, she pulled the car over into a parking lot, and we were sitting there, and I was laughing, and she was laughing, and then this crazy thing happened where my mom stopped laughing, her body jolted locked, and then I, you could have heard a pin drop, and I thought, my mother is peeing. <laughs> my 39-year-old grown-ass mother sat next to me in her little beige chevette and filled the driver's seat with her own urine. And that was when I knew, I'm gonna make people laugh. <laughs> I was a monster. She dropped me off at the party and I barged in like in character. I had my basket, I clicked up the sidewalk and these, I also borrowed these like three inch heels from her. I barged into the party and it was, it was amazing. I just was in character. I was walking up to people like totally popular people. Uh, there was this girl, Sarah, who was like a cheerleader and I went up to her and the next thing I knew she was laughing as I like threw this ketchup breadstick in her face and then I like ran my like rubber Freddy claw along her cheek, which I had painted with pink uh, nail polish. And I said, fresh meat, so sweet. <laughs> and she was cracking up. And this was a girl that would never in a million years talk to me. At one point I entered the, the uh, living room where they were watching scary movies on the TV and I had in the apron that I put on, I had grabbed all these Slim Jims and I started throwing them like some sort of terrifying tranny sprinkler system in the middle of the room, <laughs> screaming, Teen Jerky! Yeah! And people just kept laughing and laughing and this was like the most amazing experience I ever had and I really think that half the people at the party just had no idea that it was me 
That being said, if I took the mask off, they'd be like, who are you? Like, they wouldn't know. <laughs> It was just the most incredible time, and uh, eventually it was time to go. I knew my mom was gonna pick me up in the front yard, so I waved to all the kids and I said, goodbye kids, see you in hell, ah, ha, ha, ha. And they all, like 40 kids, like were, bye Frederica Krueger. And I walked out, like in character, like click, click, like skipping with my basket of lady fingers. And I walked into the front yard, and it was this like elation. I never had that sort of performing experience, and if you've ever worn one of those full like latex masks, it gets to be like 890 degrees on them, and it was like two hours, so I ripped it off, right? And I can feel this cool air on my face, and I'm looking up at the stars, and for this minute I think, oh my God, this is gonna end. I'm gonna be popular, or at least known to several people. And I could feel the cool air on my face, and I like sighed, and right as I was like just sort of so elated about the future, the possibilities, what high school could be like, this little white Honda pulled up. And out of it, this kid, Ethan White, got out. And Ethan White was like one of the star football players in eighth grade, and he was with this girl who I knew was a freshman in high school. Like he dated a girl that was in high school, which was a huge deal. And as they walked towards me, I like grinned at them, really happy, right? You know, like more, more, more new friends at the party. But he looked at me and he just sort of sneered at me. And then the girl he was with like rolled her eyes, and as he walked in, he hit me really hard in the shoulder. And at that moment, it occurred to me that like I was basically me in full drag from the neck down at that point. There was no Frederica anymore. It was just like that weird guy from school dressed as a lady for some reason at a Halloween party. And as they shut the door, I held up the mask and I started to be like, there's more to the Costa, and then the door just shut. <laughs> and my mom, my mom picked me up and we went home and, um, and that night I laid in bed and I was trying to like figure out like what had happened, you know? Like, how was that so awesome? Like, how could I make every night of my life as awesome as that? You know, like, how could I basically become somebody else? You know, because I had tried other things, but should I try to date more girls? Should I get on some sort of school club? Should I attempt to play a sport that involves a ball that I won't instinctively run away from when it comes towards me? Um, because what I wanted to figure out was like, how could I sort of be myself and be someone else, but better yet, be someone else that people liked and still be me, you know? And it drove me crazy and I couldn't answer the question and eventually I fell asleep. But two years later, I would answer this question. And I would do it not with the guidance of my mother, I would do it with the guidance of bisexual girls named Epiphany, who like Susie and the Banshees, and boys who wear capes and play riffraff in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I would achieve that when I had a collection of friends that my dad literally looked at once and said, all your friends look like superheroes going to a funeral. <laughs> I became a goth kid, and that was when I knew I was where I was supposed to be, because for the next three years, every day was just like Halloween. Thank you.